Is social media necessary for marketing your business? Well, when we look out there in the online world, it looks like every brand and business owner is on several different platforms and it's giving you the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> Rest assured that you're not alone in feeling this way and some of us may not actually have the type of personalities that thrive on social media. So are there alternative ways to market your business without being on social media all day long? Well, this video is going to help you to find other ways that you can still connect with the people you want to connect with and share your vision for your business without being on social media. For those of you who are new here, I'm Lydia Lee, and I help budding entrepreneurs create their dream business without struggling with self-doubt, overthinking, and complicated strategies. So if you are looking to build a business you love designed from your strengths, values, and personality, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell button to keep tuning in for videos just like this one. And after watching this video, you can also join me on my free training to learn the six steps to launch a business you love. And I'm going to pop up that link right above here so that you can join me right after this. Well, social media has been a great tool, you know, for us to connect with people, build some relationships and also be a place that businesses have been able to promote their services and build their brand with their audience. But there's sometimes come a time where some of us might be feeling a little frustrated about being on Facebook, Instagram, whatever your poison of choice might be, because it can very slowly go from inspiration right? Looking at what people are doing, feeling inspired at some point, and then that turning insidiously into comparison <laughs> and distraction from you doing your work and for you to be building your own business because you're trapped into the comparison game of what other people are doing in their businesses. And at times we have to remove ourselves from that environment in order to create space for the deep work that we want to do in our business. And so why I really want to be talking about this today in this video is because I want to plant the seed for you that to share your vision, to connect and build relationships and to sell uh, what you offer in your business can be done without social media being the primary option for you. If that's just not your jam right now. So the first uh, thing that I always tell my clients whenever they're going, where should I market my business? I'm just a new business owner. Nobody knows me yet is to tap into your existing ecosystem and start sharing your business with your existing community. You know, when we talk about building a list, building an audience, guess what? You already have an audience. You have communities, networks, old colleagues, existing colleagues, family members, friends, friends of friends. They're all in this amazing thing that my coach Pam Slim calls your watering holes, right? You're already drinking from these places. So very likely you haven't been very publicly uh, or publicly speaking about your business in ways that you think you should be doing it, right? And so where I want to kind of call your attention to at the moment is start with what you know, start with what you have, right? That might mean sending a personal email to all of your friends and family and colleagues and letting them know that you have a new business and that you are available for clients right now. And if you have an exciting new product, an exciting new uh, service to offer that's in the horizon, start telling people about it now. Start getting people excited about the work that you're finding so meaningful to share, right? Write them an email, write them a note, whatever is the way of connecting to them. Pick up the phone, <laughs> that old school thing, right? That allows people to get to know you uh, and your business and also help to share your business with people that they know. And when you do see someone that you know, right, maybe at your communities, at your church, at, at organizations that you're a part of, and you believe that that person could be a, a potential candidate for a client for you, that you can really help someone with the problems that they've shared to you at some time, invite them on a phone call, invite them to coffee if they live close to you. The whole point here is to build relationships one at a time. You don't need 
a huge list of people to finally be given permission to talk about your work. You can absolutely be doing it with one person at a time. That is absolutely how I started my coaching practice practice seven years ago is by having conversations, selling through conversations and being insanely curious about people's problems and how I can help. And as you build these relationships one at a time, don't forget to ask for referrals. Ask them, do you know someone who's also having these problems that would be interested to speak to me, that may be interested to get to know how uh, they can get support for this issue that they're dealing with, right? Very likely, uh, like-minded people know other like-minded people. And so when you ask for referrals from someone that you've spoken to and they really love your approach, they love your story, um, they may have a friend or a contact that might be also a really good fit for you. And also don't forget to look in your physical community. We all live in amazing communities around the world uh, where we have our local yoga studios, we have restaurants and cafes, we have local community centers that are part of our ecosystem, right? Living in a particular neighborhood. You might be someone that would love to build relationships uh, by partnering up with existing uh, organizations, companies, businesses, individuals that actually might have a great cohesive, um, you know, um, and, uh, energy between you and you and that person because you might have the same audience, but you do different things to help them. You might believe in similar values and maybe you can run a workshop at their space. Maybe you can do a co-hosted event that both your businesses can be promoted at the same time. So look for ways, you know, to connect, build relationships, build partnerships, and you might be surprised what you find that's in your existing ecosystem. Another way to get seen and visible for your business without being on social media is to look at pitching yourself to a podcast. Now, a lot of people have a limiting belief that until you become an expert or someone that's been in business, a seasoned business owner for many years, you're not allowed to be on a podcast. I don't know who made up this rule, but it's definitely a limiting belief that I had myself when I first started a business, when podcasting was pretty new at the time even. But even people that I work with nowadays will say, I'm not allowed to pitch to a podcast until I'm an established business owner, whatever that means. So if you are someone that loves to share your story, you're someone that loves to talk about your experience, and you are not the one that's in charge of having to market that podcast, right? But you just show up and bring your full self and bring your expertise and your strengths to the table, and you get to do it with someone else in that podcast. This might be a really great strategy to market your business. You don't need to start with famous podcasts because this is sort of where people get a bit, um, you know, they feel less courageous to pitching to a million, you know, listener podcasts that's happening every month. But you can start with new podcasts, new podcast hosts that are actually investing a, time, a ton of time and energy to really start this up the right way. And these are the podcast interview, interviewers that are really committed, you know, to having good shows because they're just starting out and they're working really hard and building an audience for their podcast and very likely will be open enough to be working with someone that isn't, you know, famous at this point just to be on their podcast. They're willing to work with people that are have something valuable to give, valuable to share and have a cool story that they can, um, you know, experience on the podcast. So start with a new podcast host, work your way up uh, to more famous podcasts if you wish to do that, to have more credibility. I built a great audience actually just pitching to colleagues that I knew that were new coaches that were starting their podcast. I went on 10 podcast shows when I first started in my first three months of business. And that certainly built my list for me. And I didn't have to worry about marketing anything. I just sort of shared, right, that episode when it came live as a, a way to collaborate, right, with the podcast host that puts so much work into their podcast. But I didn't really have to build that audience for it. And in time, as that podcast becomes more known, your episode will also get get on the way up there as well. So where do you find some new podcast hosts? You could go to iTunes or whatever podcast um, platform that you use and check out the new and noteworthy podcasts. These are up and coming podcasts that are getting some views, getting some listeners, and these might be the hosts that you may want to be pitching to and a show that might be a good fit for your strengths and your expertise. You can also go into Facebook groups where there are new entrepreneurs starting businesses together or podcasting 
networking groups where there are uh, actual podcast hosts that are looking for guests and are willing to take on guests as a, a direct route to pitch to those hosts. There's an excellent podcast platform called Podit that I've used recently that I really love because it's almost like a Tinder, a Tinder platform for podcast hosts and podcast guests. And I just find that people there are really ethical, they're really awesome, and um, they know what they want on their show. So you can easily pitch to the right host that will be taking you on. But don't forget to create a small pitch. Take some time to write out what are the topics that you would love to be talking about that you want to be known for and that you're really good at. What's your wheelhouse? What are the strengths that you bring to the table that would make it really relevant for that particular audience, for the podcast that you're pitching to? And really make it easy for the host to say yes, right? When you tell the host, give them some topics, give them, right, what it is that you can actually, um, you know, be giving value on. You're not going to put that burden on the host to come and think up of a topic that you should be, um, be interviewed on, right? The minute you make it easy for the host to say yes is the minute that they, they will welcome you to that podcast faster uh, than if you were not to have a good pitch uh, and just sent them a quick little message. Message. This next way to market and promote my business without being on social media is one of my favorites because I get a direct contact with the people that really love my work. Starting a newsletter is one of my favorite ways to market and keep in contact with my audience as well as build relationships over time. Now, as humans, we are never going to really be trusting somebody just from looking at a social media post or just reading one blog. What we really want to be doing as business owners is to welcome them into a space that is non-distracting -distract and it's also going to allow us to be on their inbox, right? Which is the holy grail really of, in, uh, you know, like contact information, you know, social media, they can shut you off. They can scroll right by you. Right. And not, and who knows if this platform's even showing your post to many people without you buying an ad, but in a newsletter and in your email list, this is where you get the direct connection to your audience. And they're very likely more likely to read an email than to scroll past uh, or to read a post that they won't scroll past. So when you start an email newsletter, you have control and that is an asset for your business. And when you start to write blogs, when you start to give out content on a YouTube channel, for example, don't forget to invite people to your email newsletter where you'll be giving people more advice, more tips, more fun stuff, and only something that you offer to part part this particular audience. The key point here is to write a newsletter consistently. It doesn't matter if it's once a month or bi-weekly or weekly, you can choose your rhythm and your cadence on what works for you when it comes to frequency. The biggest part is being consistent in making sure that your audience can expect to hear from you at certain days of the month. Now you can use your checklist to do some really cool stuff like share advice, tips, even things like a, a music playlist if music is your jam and that's how you love uh, to connect with people where you can share your music or your curation of music. Uh, you can also share, you know, inspirational stories or experiences that you're having at the moment in your life and in your business, or maybe what you've been coaching your clients or your customers to do that might be an interesting tip uh, to share with your audience, right? And of course, share information about your products and your services so people know how to get your help in a much more intimate way. And don't worry about needing to send something every day. Like I said, the best frequency is one that works for your schedule and one that you can show up for consistently. And once you've built that habit to do so, um, you can add more days, right? That you might want to be sending multiple newsletters a month if that fits the bill. But just remember, you can send it when you have something meaningful, inspiring, and helpful to share so that you don't feel like it's a have-to activity and it's more of a want-to activity in your marketing. So I hope that these three tips on how you can market and promote and be visible in your business without being on social media was inspiring for you to be able to look at alternative ways to do so. So I would love for you to share with me below what out of the three tips that you heard today, what is one that you would love to try? Maybe something else that you have been thinking about but didn't think you could do it. Um, I would love to hear about it. And very likely, if that's the thing that calls to you, that might be your best way to influence and that might be 
be your best way to connect and build relationships. And that is really the most important piece, no matter what vehicle you use to share your business. I hope that you've enjoyed this video today and I will see you next week for a brand new episode.